Good evening, everyone. I'm Trisha Toyota. And I'm Ross Becker. Pat O'Brien is on vacation. Some 17,000 Riverside businesses and residents are getting phone service back tonight following a shooting rampage. Pacific Bell Switching Center. Backup equipment started to arrive from San Diego about three hours ago and has already brought phone service back to a majority of those affected. Now, Channel 2's Dave Lopez has been following the story all day, and he brings us this live report now from inside the phone center. David. Right, we're live in the switching center where you can see the bullet holes have not been replaced in the glass, but directly over my shoulder, you can see the myriad of wires. Each one of those wires is connected somewhere. You see the gentleman working behind it. And that is the troubleshooting spot. That uh, feeds the computer, telling the computer where the problems are. Uh, hard to believe, but each one of those wires does connect somewhere. Very limited phone service. I'm going to take a quick little walk over here to show you the computer that has been put in now. This is, uh, all these lights indicate that there is some kind of service. And Gary, go ahead and switch the camera over to those gentlemen working over there. That is a computer that they're hoping can do the job. It is not as powerful, not as big as the computer that was shot out, but hopefully it'll do the job. The room looks vastly different than this morning, because early this morning, that's when the nightmare began. It ended peacefully. 47-year-old Tony Apodaca surrendered to Riverside Police just after 8 o'clock this morning, but not until he had spent five hours firing nearly 100 rounds of ammunition into expensive and high-tech telephone switching equipment. The second floor of the Pac Bell Riverside building was left a mess. Broken glass, dangling wires, smashed computer boxes, all peppered by blasts from a 12-gauge shotgun and handgun that Apodaca fired at will. It looked like random firing of a madman, but his former boss said Apodaca knew exactly what he was doing. What he did was no accident. He knew what he was doing. Oh, no, no, absolutely not. No, he would, that is the brains of the machine. Without that, as you can see, nothing works. The ordeal began just before 3 o'clock this morning. A security guard refused to let Apodaca in the building. That's when Apodaca took a shotgun and fired a blast right through that door, and the security guard changed his mind. Apodaca took three hostages with him upstairs to the second floor in the computer room. One of the hostages he let go. The other two escaped. All the while, Apodaca was firing at random, complaining out loud how the phone company had taken away some of his benefits. We know he was unhappy with the, with the benefits he received, and his demands throughout the morning centered solely around getting in touch with somebody in authority. I think Big Wheel was the words he used. He wanted to get a hold of the Big Wheel. That's right. Back live now, you see the flashing lights. That's a good sign. As long as those lights keep flashing and the clicking behind me keeps clicking, there's some kind of phone service as we keep on panning down. There's about 14 men here feverishly working, hoping that the computer will do the job all night. Uh, they won't know that until in the morning. But uh, at least for now, if you're in these prefixes, 781, 788, 787, and 369 in Riverside, you should get some kind of service. It may take two or three times, but uh, they're doing the best they can. As you can see, they're uh, working around the clock. I'm Dave Lopez, reporting live from the computer switching room at Pac Bell in Riverside. All right, David, thanks for the latest. And an armed and a dangerous convicted. Pac Bell offices in Riverside early today. Armed with handgun and plenty of ammunition, Apodaca took five hostages. Then police say he started shooting up the heart of the phone system, expertly destroying millions of dollars in equipment. Apodaca told hostage negotiators he had a beef with the company over his retirement benefits. All the hostages either escaped or were released, and five hours after the shooting began, Apodaca gave up to police. Nearly 17,000 Pac Bell customers in Riverside still don't have phone service, but in case of an emergency, the company says do this. What we are recommending that residents' customers do is canvas their neighborhood. Quite often, your neighbor will not have the same prefix you have. You should canvas your neighborhood, find out who has telephone service, and if you have to make essential calls, make it from that telephone. Pac Bell says repairs may cost up to $25 million, and in the worst case scenario, it could take three to four days before service is finally restored. Donna. Both Texaco and... Employees at a Pacific Bell office where a gunman caught by shooting up phone equipment with a shotgun. Reporter Linda Edwards says phone service of four prefixes should be restored by morning, while charges of kidnap, assault, and vandalism are considered against the suspect. These bullet holes are evidence of the mayhem that went on here. For five hours, 47-year-old Tony Apodaca barricaded himself in this maintenance administration center at Pacific Bell in downtown Riverside. Riverside police say at 3 a.m. he gained entrance through this back door, taking an unarmed guard and four other employees hostage. 
Within a couple of hours, all the hostages got out safely. It was the telephone equipment and apparently the phone company that Apodaca wanted to harm. The individual whose name you have uh, indicated his demands were in regard to talking to someone in authority with the phone company. He had some concerns over the benefits on his retirement. By 8 a.m., police negotiators got Apodaca to turn himself in. Police estimated he fired 75 to 100 rounds in here from both a shotgun and a handgun. Riverside police say that Apodaca knew what he was doing when he fired the weapons at the phone company equipment. He was able to do several million dollars worth of damage. Uh, for those customers who need 911 and emergency services, what we are recommending is that they canvass their neighborhood. Oftentimes, their neighbor will not have the same prefix they do, and they should really canvass their neighborhood, find out who's got telephone service, and if they have to make essential phone calls, make it from there. Originally, Pacific Bell officials thought it would take three to four days to get the phone lines fixed. Well, they've since said phone service could be restored much sooner. Before employees were allowed back in the building, police searched the premises for explosives, including Apodaca's truck, but they found none. In Riverside, Linda Edwards, Channel 9 News. The Federal Aviation Administration is in a four-hour standoff in which five people were held. Authorities say Apodaca was upset over his retirement benefits and sprayed the Pack Bell office with a handgun and shotgun fire. No one was hit by the bullets, but $10 million in damage was caused and phone service was cut off from 15,000 homes and businesses there. Tonight, several Southland people who say they are victims... And uh, at 6 o'clock, we were able to bring almost all our service up. When we say service, it's basic service, and that does have a few limitations. All right, Linda, thank you very much. Linda Bonnickson, spokesperson for Pacific Bell. All right, John. And the Manhattan continues to... One Sam five three four. Here's the time. I can't believe it. This is it.